Welcome back to another video. Today I'll be reviewing my 2018 Norco site. This review will also apply to the newer models as well as the second hand market. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Firstly a quick disclaimer, this bike is not fully stock so some of the review will be different to the bike you may find. So the Norco site alloy models starting from around 3500 Australian dollars feature high strength and high quality aluminum frames with a full link suspension system. In the over a thousand kilometres I've done on my bike, the frame has had no issues and the bearings are still in great condition. The geometry of the frame is slightly outdated as this bike is from 2018, but I find even with its downfalls it still gives an amazing ride quality and provides so much confidence to the rider. I've also repainted this frame and there is a video on my channel about how I went about doing that. So on to the suspension. With 140mm of travel in the rear and 150mm of travel in the front, you could not be believing this is a trail bike, but that is where you'd be mistaken. This is well and truly an enduro race ready machine, and I've ridden it at many downhill tracks and never felt underbiked, with the exception of extremely large hits that would even have downhill bikes pushed to the limit. The RockShox Deluxe RT rear shock provides great value for money, while still performing very well. Although if you plan to race down her enduro, it does get overwhelmed sometimes and this bike could benefit from the consistency of a higher end shock. The RockShox Revelation front fork is a bit of a letdown for more aggressive riders, but for the price it is 100% adequate. The Transex dropper post has a small amount of play in it side to side, and although it has not caused any durability or quality issues, it does bring into question the choice of parts on this bike. So now onto the parts I've changed and how they stack up to the originals. Rims and tyres. So I cracked my rear rim when I made a bad choice on the trail a little while back and have changed over to a Newt Proof Neutron downhill rim and now have amazing stiffness, stiffness and confidence with the rear wheel. The stock hubs are still going strong and for tyres I've gone with a Maxxis Asagai for the front and a Maxxis DHR2 for the rear. They're great tyres for enduro and downhill and provide much better performance than the stock Maxxis Ardent Trail tyres. I've changed the handlebar, stem and saddle to ones that suit my riding style more and provide a more capable feel on the bike. They are the Newt Proof Horizon Bar and Stem and a Spank Saddle. After recently breaking my rear derailleur, I've added a new SRAM NX12 speed group set and it performs like a dream. As did the stock 11 speed one, and any drivetrain will often show its age and I believe that SRAM have done something right with the whole SRAM Eagle system. Now so the original drivetrain was the 11 speed SRAM NX and I did around 1000 to 1100 kilometers on it before seeing any kind of braking or issues with it. Of course replacing the chain and cassette where applicable. So let's talk about how this bike rides. So, in one word, it just goes downhill amazing. This bike is just so much fun going downhill and also carries so much speed. Charms, rocks and corners are this bike's bread and butter. Once you dial the setup in, it can be turned great for trail, enduro or even downhill. I love going downhill and the fact this bike has been my go-to for the past three and a half years says a lot. The climbing of this bike is a lot like the well-known enduro saying, winch and plummet. It climbs well all things considered, but you can definitely tell it's built for the downhills, and weighing around 15 kilograms, this bike is not light or heavy. Overall, I'd rate this bike a 9 out of 10, as it is amazing, but could always use some improvement. Thanks for watching this review. If you have any questions or feel I missed something, feel free to leave a comment. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.